Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about some of the major differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. These are the two major types of reproduction that organisms use to generate offspring. Now, why is reproduction important? Well, reproduction is one of the major characteristics of life. That is, when you write down all of the characteristics that are required for something to be living, reproduction is one of them. If you are interested in learning about some of the other major characteristics of life, see my video on that topic. Now let's talk about asexual reproduction first. Asexual reproduction is characterized by offspring that are genetically identical to the parents. This means that the DNA sequences in the parent are the same as the DNA sequences in the offspring, except for any random mutations that may have occurred during the DNA replication process. Of course, this is in contrast to sexual reproduction, where offspring are genetically different from their parents. Now let's talk about the reasons for this. The reasons that offspring are genetically identical in asexual reproduction is because of how the reproduction proceeds. That is, the DNA of a cell is replicated and then the cells divide. For example, binary fission in bacteria is where you have a bacterial parent cell that replicates its DNA, enlarges in size, and then splits into two cells. If you're interested in learning more about the process of binary fission, see my video on that topic. Of course, in sexual reproduction, the offspring are genetically different because there are two parents. You have gametes from a male and gametes from a female that come together in the process of fertilization. For example, in humans, this is when the female's egg is fertilized by male sperm, and so the resulting offspring gets half of their DNA from the mother and half of their DNA from the father. This makes them genetically different from either their mother or their father. Back to asexual production, let's talk about some of the pros and cons. The major pro of asexual reproduction is that no mate is needed. Bacteria cells, for example, they can simply divide. Whenever the environment is good for reproduction, they can divide and they don't need to find a mate to do that. Of course, a con is reduced genetic variety. And of course, that reduced genetic variety is because the offspring are genetically identical to the parent cells. Again, with the exception of any random mutations that happen during the DNA replication process. Pros and cons for sexual reproduction. The pro is increased genetic variety. This is because the offspring have half of their DNA from their mother, half of their DNA from their father, as well as any genetic mutations that arose during the DNA replication process that led to the gametes that were used in the reproductive process. A con of sexual reproduction is that an individual must find a mate. This can be difficult for populations that have a low number of individuals or where the individuals are very widespread that can sometimes make sexual reproduction difficult. Also, sexual reproduction is not as fast as asexual reproduction in most cases. The generation time is the time between consecutive generations. For organisms that reproduce sexually, the generation time is typically longer. For example, in human populations, the generation time is about 20 to 30 years between generations. With asexual reproduction, however, it's much more rapid. Bacteria can divide and reproduce very, very quickly. For example, the generation time of E. coli in good conditions is as little as 20 minutes. 
In fact, E. coli cells can start a second round of binary fission before the first round has even finished. And so it's a much more rapid process, which can lead to great numbers in a short amount of time. Now, one more thing to think about, why is this variety important? Why is the increased genetic variety from sexual reproduction a pro, and why is the reduced genetic variety from asexual reproduction a con? Well, it's because genetic variety is what allows natural selection to occur and what eventually leads to evolution. That is because organisms are often living in environments that can change. And in some cases, environments that can change very rapidly. So when you have a population of organisms with increased genetic variety, you'll find that some individuals in those populations are more equipped to handle the change in environment, which allows the population overall to survive, but the more beneficial genetic variations will spread through a population over time, and this change over time is evolution. Whenever you have reduced genetic variety, whenever the genetic variety is based solely on random mutations, organisms are dependent on having the right mutations for the environment at that given time. And if they don't have the correct mutations that will allow them to survive in a changing environment, then the populations could die out. Um, of course, if they do have the genetic variety necessary, then again, you would see beneficial genetic mutations being able to spread through a population over time, and that change over time leads to evolution. So that is the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. I hope you learned a lot from watching Biology Professor, and we'll see you next time.